Jan Martel, The Life of Pi. Now, this is a pretty de decent book, of course. Uh, unfortunately, it relies on the trope of the single reveal at the end. Which is, uh, I don't know if I should say it, maybe you should read the book or watch the movie and find out for yourself. But I have to say, I don't know, I wasn't that impressed with this reveal at the end. I'm like, sure, it was kind of gruesome, but <clears throat> I don't know, I, get, I guess it depends on taste, but of course this isn't... <clears throat> This isn't a bad book. The writing is pretty... Pretty... Not excellent, but it, it, it certainly is a, a cut above the rest. Uh, it's a pretty... It is a classic, a legendary book, if you will. Uh, I will probably reread this... Just because it, there are some parts in here that are, you know, they're nice. They're nice pieces to read. Um, of course, there's this kid. <clears throat> His family owns a circus, a zoo, a zoo, I mean. And for some reason, he, the family decides to move and he takes the zoo with him and puts the whole zoo on this giant boat. <clears throat> Which I found, uh, I don't know, that fact really just puzzled me. It's like, so you have a zoo, and you're going to move on a different continent, and you're going to take all the animals with you. It's like giraffes, elephants, tigers, whatever. And all of these animals, they just get moved onto this big boat. And that's just, can you imagine the logistics of that? That's just, yikes. But anyway, they get on this big boat... And they go forward to their new lives with new dreams and aspirations. And of course, there's the storm. The, boats, the boat sinks. Most of the people drown. As well as the animals. And our, our protagonist, Pi, survives. <clears throat> and he survives on this little boat with, what is it, a tiger, a zebra an orangutan, and, I don't know, something else, maybe. And they survive for, I don't know, how long. It was pretty long. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the crazy stuff happens on the, bo on the boat. It's because the tiger is there. And, uh, of course, you are told one thing throughout this book about this kid... And the animals he has to survive with on this boat, of course. And then, by the end, all of that is shattered because of the reveal. Which I won't go into. Because, I mean, you know, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This reveal isn't, uh forced it isn't it doesn't come out of nowhere because it is understandable when you read it why this happened and why this kid did what he did and so on it's not a bad reveal it's just this book relies heavily on this reveal and then by the end you're like oh okay and that because of this reveal everything that uh, that has happened before I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. It, it, uh, you know, once this is revealed, I mean, I don't really care about the other 300 pages that I've just read. It relies a bit too much on this crazy reveal. But that's pretty much it. It's a book that's worth reading. Of course, it's not in my top. But it's pretty alright. And, uh, you know, we have to say about this, you know, the protagonist, of course, Pi, 
survives survives this incident, this horrible, horrible situation. He survives and he grows up. And uh, because of this, he he has a certain philosophy, a certain ideology that he lives by. He has certain principles. Uh, you know, he doesn't live with hatred. Um, he accepts all religions. He is not a bigot or prejudiced, um, which is a nice... It's nice, you know. You could say he's open-minded, open-minded. You know, he calls himself. He's a Christian. He's a Hindu. He's a he's a, a Muslim, and so on and so forth. And it's all right, cool, whatever. It's whatever. You, you got to. You have to scrutinize every subject. And. Uh, At first, when you meet him and he tells you, you know, he speaks about life and whatever and religion and spirituality and hatred and you're kind of like, you think, you know, this guy, he's a bit, um, what you might call it, uh, presumptuous or, um, you know, he's uh, sort of presented on, on this high horse. But uh, as you read on and you find out what happened to him, you kind of understand Right, but what 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 puzzled me is listen. <clears throat> what happens in by the end of this book? I mean, let's just say that it is uh, a bit shrugged off. I mean, this kid. Listen, this kid that does certain things that involves other people dying, and that's that's just the half of it. Okay, there's more. And then, as the book starts, we we meet this guy, and he's an adult, and he doesn't really, I don't know, uh, to me at least, he doesn't seem that affected by it. I mean, this, when you really look into it, this kid did some fucked up shit. I mean, to survive, of course. I mean, his mind just went fucking nuts because of the situation he was in. Right, but still, I don't see him that affected by what he, but what he has done, as a kid, no less. I don't see him. I don't see him that traumatized. You know, maybe he meditated a lot. He re-examined his whole life, whatever. But it's still, I don't sense no guilt. No, I don't know. There, there are no. There are no. lasting effects of what he has done to other people and he was a young kid then right it just seems to me that he is presented as this wise uh, charitable uh, open-minded free thinker that's so religious and spiritual and he has principles and he eats well and he exercises and he is just a lovable little dude and it's like bro you 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 were involved in some shit you know let's just say it you killed some people okay and then you survive and you're acting like i don't know it's not it's no biggie that's what caught me in this uh, novel that's what caught me that's what captured my attention that this 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 kid that that survived this horrible situation and grows up i mean you know this is just how i read it how 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 i my interpretation of this is that as an adult pi doesn't seem that affected by it it's like he moved on whatever bro and that's fine that's fine it's just it didn't shock me but it it really it it captured me the fact that this dude now he's an adult and he doesn't seem affected by it it's like <clears throat> you've done some stuff dude okay and he doesn't doesn't even talk about it like it's just this wow 
this horrible thing that he has done is just something. Something happened. That's it. Move, move on. There's nothing to see here, folks. <clears throat> but that's just me. A pretty good book. You know, pretty good movie. Um, it is pleasant. It is pleasant. Again, the reveal is just too... The whole book relies on that reveal. There's not a lot of much else. Without that, without that reveal, this book would have been subpar. But anyway, um, I do recommend it. It is... It is a wonderful little piece that will... Perhaps make you question things in your life you know if you were in this guy's situation what would you do and etc of course are you living life to the fullest etc these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves you know it's always a cliche whenever you're just living your life and you think you're just at the height of it and then something horrible happens in which you almost get killed and then you you realize that oh shit my life is a joke and then you begin to, you know, make changes. But then again, all all of the changes also appear to be lame. And it, it's a cliche. And uh, Pi seems to have his life under wraps. He seems to be doing pretty well for himself. And um, is he living life to the fullest? I don't know. I really can't tell. He doesn't seem that he doesn't seem plagued by what he has done in the past, and of course, um, it's no, it's not like he did it deliberately, like he wanted to harm these people. I get it; it was survival, it was almost insanity, but still, it's like, you know, whatever. <clears throat> so that's about it. Read more books. Because they're fantastic. And what books do, is it make, they make you use your brain. They make you question things. That's, that's what my advice. If you want to use your brain correctly, and not just be another follower, um... A mindless follower. You just have to read books. It doesn't have to be a good book. There's something about reading text, reading a story, following characters around. They just work your brain. You know, it's like a massage. Okay, it's like a massage. Once you've read a decent amount of books, your brain takes off. It flies like a bird, and it just will never fall again. That's why I read books. Reading does something to your brain that is wonderful. And uh, you should keep on reading and find your favorite book. <laughs>